My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you're all doing well. For this trip, I'm out here in the green forest and it's stunning as always. The entire forest here is soaking wet though and there's little patches of snow all over the place. And I do mean little. Basically the snow is melting and now <laughs> everything's just soaking wet. Every time I come out to this location, I explore a different route. I'm constantly going off trail to see what's out here. It is such a beautiful place. I think this will work. I think it'll work. For this trip, folks, I am using a tarp. I'm going to cowboy camp underneath it, just lay on the ground. It's been a while since I've done that, and it's something that I absolutely love to do. The tarp that I'm going to use in this episode is from a company called Rab. This is the Sil Tarp 3, and I'm excited to get this out and use it for the very first time. Recently, I put up my preview of this. I have the Sil Tarp 1. It's a fantastic tarp, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a great tarp as well. With the Sil Tarp 1, I use it more as an emergency shelter because it's so small. With this one here, this is more for camping and backpacking. I'm going to think about the setup here for a second and come up with something. I'll tell you more about it once I have it set up.
As you all can see here, I have this tent stake going into the ground. Basically, it's going into moss. There's very little soil underneath this, so I need to brace it. This rock isn't all that large, but it's quite heavy, and that's because of all of the iron in it. You can see that red color to it. That's iron. For now, everyone, I think that bracing is good enough. If it gets really, really windy, I can get some larger rocks and brace it. But for now, good enough. With the tarp set up here, let me explain to you all what I've done. I started by staking out the back close to the ground. I tied the tarp to this long stick, and luckily I had this tree over here, which I then tied to. That way, the guy line is above my head, and I don't have to worry about tripping on it. That's nice. The sides have been staked to the ground, and I used an additional stick on the inside to raise up the tarp to give me more space. With this setup here, there were two main things that I wanted to accomplish, protection and space. Because of the way that I set this up, the back is close to the ground, the sides are close to the ground, and I can stand up inside of this. I have a ton of space in the morning. I can have my table, I can have my chair, sleeping area, and everything will stay dry. As you all can see here, I'm setting up my bedding for the evening. I have a ground sheet on the ground, then I have a sleeping bag that's wrapped around the sleeping pad. That way I could toss and turn all night long and the sleeping bag stays in place. That's a pretty sweet feature. And those two components are going inside of a bivy, US military surplus. Now my friends, it's time for some coffee before it gets too late.
tell you what, everyone, it's getting late. Already it's four o'clock. How did that happen? This day has absolutely flown by. Even though it doesn't feel like I've been in camp all that long, <laughs> I've been here for a while. I think more than anything, I've just been enjoying it. This is such a beautiful place. In fact, this is one of my favorite places in the entire world. Take a look at this forest here. It is absolutely unreal. Beautiful, peaceful, quiet. I've seen no one, heard no one all day. Just me, the wind, the birds, and you, and that's it. <laughs> Over the last couple of months, I've been thinking about getting some new tattoos. I have a number already, but the ones I've been thinking about getting are the GPS coordinates to my favorite locations. This would be one of them. Lone Wolf Mountain would be another and then maybe some other places that I've explored over the years. One of those places has to be Big Island, Hawaii. Susie and I, we went there for our very, very, very late honeymoon. Susie and I were kids having kids. So when we got married, we didn't have any money to go do anything. No honeymoons, nothing like that. Maybe 10 years later after we got married, we finally had our honeymoon. We saved up enough money so that we could go and had an amazing time on Big Island. The island itself was incredible. The people were incredible. The food was amazing. We had such a good time. One of my favorite memories was something that we just splurged on. We decided to rent a helicopter and we flew over a volcano and it was just unreal. Folks, it was unreal. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done. We were able to open up the door on the helicopter and we were so close to the magma, to the lava, that we felt the immense heat. I mean, it was just unreal watching the lava bubble up and spew. It was very, very cool. One day, I would love to go back. I'd love to go back to Big Island and hike. I would love to hike to the top of Mauna Kea. In fact, it's the largest mountain in the entire world, taller than Everest. The thing is this, most of the mountain is underwater. It was a very, very cool place and I'd love to go back. In fact, I don't know, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about taking Susie on a vacation and going back to Big Island. I think it's time that Susie and I, we celebrate the fact that we have our kids raised out of the house empty nesters. That, my friends, would be a lot of fun. Plus, I'd love to bring you all along with us. Go on the hikes, maybe do some of the off-road adventures out there. <laughs> Susie and I, we have all sorts of crazy stories from being on Big Island. It was so much fun. <laughs> one night, this is ridiculous, but one night we were at the hotel and like I felt like drinking. So I, I ordered this, I'm not exactly sure what it was, it was like a sampler of beers. So it was... <laughs> It was like 12 beers, all different types. So I started at one end and I went all the way down, drank them all. And that's when Susie was like, hey, I think we should go to Volcanoes National Park. And by that time, it had to have been like 1030 at night. She hadn't been drinking. I was just about drunk. Anyway, so like, I was like, okay, let's go. So cruise it out there. I'm feeling good. She's driving. And I remember seeing like the sky glowing red from like the lava. It was just incredible. It really was. Some really good memories there. Yeah, and I, I think it's time that maybe we go back. This time, we're taking you all with us. The Mauna Kea hike, that would be really, really interesting. If you've done that hike before, please shoot me an email. I'd love to hear all about it. By the way, Cheers, my friends. Cheers. All right, as far as the sun goes, we have about an hour and a half of light left. I'm going to finish up the coffee and begin collecting some firewood. I wanna have a fire tonight. The sun is kind of like popping in and out of the trees. That's why I'm like putting them on, taking them off, and so on. <laughs> All right, let's gather some firewood.
We'll see in a second if this is going to take off or not. This stuff is soaking wet. There's absolutely nothing here that's really dry. But you can hear that snap. On the inside of this wood, the core is dry, but everything else is just soaking wet. And you could see that with all of this smoke, all of this moisture. Gosh, this stuff is so wet. <laughs> it's just soaked. Now folks, this is nice. By the way, I've taken this pad, I've put it on the ground. That way my stool doesn't like sink into the soil. Without this pad, it would be a nightmare. And that's because this ground is so soft. I've been sitting around this fire for a while, just thinking to myself how unfortunate it is that we've received virtually no snow this winter. Not so far. We've had a handful of minor events, some freezing rain, a little bit of snow here and there, like an inch or two, but that's it. No real winter weather. Every day, about 45 degrees, sometimes 50, sometimes 60. It's just been crazy. I had high hopes that we were going to receive a fair amount of snow this year, but so far, it's not looking good. Tons and tons of rain, but very little snow, unfortunately. He doesn't like it either. <laughs> As it stands, everyone, it's 5.30, the sun is going down, I'm seeing some dark clouds over in the sky out there, coming this way. For dinner, we have a real termap meal. This one is pulled pork. Oh man, it is so good. <laughs> it is fantastic. By the way, I have heard from numerous viewers recently who have been able to purchase real termat meals from Base Camp Food. At the same time, I've heard from people who say they haven't been able to order from Base Camp Food. So I'm not exactly sure what's taking place, but some people are getting lucky and they're able to order these meals. Just in case you don't know, these real termat meals are incredible. But to find them in the United States is super difficult. As for this trip, I've really enjoyed it. I know I haven't really been talking all that much, and that's because more than anything, I've just been enjoying this, the peace and the quiet. And to be honest, everyone, I've been enjoying a trip where everything's not soaking wet from the get-go. With the adventures that I've been doing lately, there's just been so much rain. I mean, as soon as I get started, it's on, everything gets soaked, everything gets muddy. This is the first trip where I'm out, where everything's nice and dry. It's pretty nice.
As far as the forecast goes, the last time that I was able to look, right now I don't have good service, so I'm not able to check. But it said, I believe it was like rain after 3 a.m. and then like steady rain all night long into tomorrow. Tomorrow morning when we leave, it should be pretty wet. But that's okay. I love to hike in the rain. Plus, this trip is going to be a good test for this tarp. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this or not. This is the Rab Silt Tarp 3. I have the one person version and absolutely love it. So I wanted to get in a larger tarp to see how well it performs. This tarp is made from Sil Nylon. The pros to Sil Nylon, strong, incredibly lightweight, packs up to almost nothing. The cons, it stretches, it sags. With a small tarp, not that big of a deal. With a big tarp, it could be. That's going to be an interesting aspect to this test. Dinner time, my friends, dinner time. Oh man, that smells so good. In the previous overnight adventure, I was going to tell you all about some of the crazy lightning strikes that I've seen over the years. Storm chasing, filming adventures like this, taking photos, and so on. In the previous trip, it was raining and storming so hard, I couldn't hear myself think. I could not talk to the camera. One of the craziest lightning strikes I've ever seen took place when I was a young kid. I would guess seven, eight, something like that. So when I was young, I spent all my time out in the woods. And at this time, I was building a dam in the creek. So I had this big piece of plastic, and I was building this rock wall. It was pretty impressive, actually. <sighs> it was a huge pond. Anyway, so like I can hear rain's coming, it's storming, I hear thunder. So I take off running towards the house. To enter the yard, it's like a big wooden gate with a metal latch. So I unlatch it, walk through, close it, turn around. So I start running up the walkway to the porch. And right as I get to the top of the porch, we have like this metal fence in the yard, right? Lightning strikes that fence and literally catches the metal of the fence on fire. It is melting and falling to the ground. I can't even put into words what that was like. Not only to see it, but to feel it. Because I was so close. It's amazing that I didn't get hurt, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, after that point, I've been obsessed with storms. As you all have seen with the channel, anytime there's a storm coming, I'm out in it. I don't want to get hurt, I just want to feel that excitement, that, that adrenaline rush. It's incredible. Plus, lightning itself, it's just amazing. It's unpredictable. There's all these theories about how lightning behaves and what it strikes, but they're just theories. And I've seen these theories being proven incorrect time and time again. The way that lightning strikes is completely random. There'll be situations where lightning strikes a small tree right next to a gigantic metal pole. It goes where it wants to go. Another crazy lightning experience took place, oh, let's see, maybe 14, 15 years ago or so. I was chasing this thunderstorm here in the mountains, which, let me tell you this, chasing storms in the mountains is beyond infuriating. <laughs> First off, there's limited roads and there's so many trees. So you could have like a supercell going off right over this mountain. You'll drive over the hill, there's no road to it or there's trees blocking it. So it's like chasing storms up here is like the luck of the draw. It's not skill, it's pure luck and timing. Anyways, I was chasing a storm up north next to the Virginia border. I come up to this one place and the road is closed. There's a barricade. So instead of turning around, I just pull over there and I set up my camera. And as soon as I click the shutter, right? A lightning bolt strikes the ground. Before I saw it, I felt it. I felt this surge of electricity surrounding me. All of the hair on my arms stood up and I heard that pop. If you've ever been close to a lightning bolt, I remember hearing it, feeling it, and saying, oh shit. Bam! Just everything shook. That was just crazy. The picture was horrible, <laughs> by the way. I think I got like part of it in frame. Again, that's just how it goes when it comes to taking lightning photography. 
You don't know where the lightning's going to strike at. It's a pure guess. An educated guess, but still a guess. I have plenty of stories to tell just like that. I think the most unusual lightning strike that I ever saw took place down in Florida. We lived in a small town called LaBelle and we had driven to Fort Myers. We were in the middle of this knockdown thunderstorm raining super hard, lots and lots of lightning. So I was in the back seat, dad was driving and I was looking out the window, right? As we're cruising down the road, there's big fields on both sides of the vehicle. So I'm staring out the window and there's this lightning strike, right? This lightning bolt. And it seemed like it just lasted for a long time. And as that lightning bolt was coming down, there was this ball. I don't know what it was. I've never seen anything like it, but it was like this purple ball and it went down with that lightning bolt. And I don't know how far away it was, right? But I remember it just like scaring the livage out of all of us. The repercussions of the lightning hitting the ground was so intense. I mean, it was something else. I don't know if that's technically ball lightning. I've heard that term used before, but not in that sort of situation. I've heard of ball lightning being something completely different. Whatever I saw, it's the only time I've ever seen it, and it was incredible. Incredible. It is time to call it a night. But it's been a good evening. Just been kicking back, enjoying the fire. And now it's time to go to bed, folks. As for the time, let's see, it's about 10.30. Yeah, we'll see what time the rain comes in. Sounds like it's going to be late morning. I'm going to turn on a movie and go to sleep, I think. I'm not entirely sure what I downloaded. I downloaded some movies a long time ago. I forgot what they are now. Probably something awful. That's my M.O. <laughs> yeah, it feels good to be in bed. Sleeping bag warm, sleeping pad comfortable. Then I have the bivy. It's holding in some heat and blocking the wind, which is nice. All right, everyone, I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning everyone. It has been a very interesting night. As far as the weather goes, it did rain around maybe like 2 o'clock. It started raining for about an hour, then it stopped. After 2 o'clock, the winds have picked up, as you all can hear. It is super, super windy. I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and that's because <laughs> the stick that I used back here for the support it became loose in a wind gust and it fell and hit me right in the face <laughs> and uh, woke me up. So I've been up since five o'clock. I've packed up some of my gear, such as the sleeping bag and the sleeping pad. That way I can have this space inside of here for breakfast and so on. One thing that I find really interesting 
is the forecast from yesterday. The forecast was for like rain to start around 3 a.m. and supposedly it was going to rain all day. I was able to get the radar to load and the bulk of the rain is not even here yet. The forecast was incorrect. It's on its way, but it's not here yet. That's how it goes when you're in the outdoors. This morning, everyone, I figured I would answer some questions that you all have recently sent in. The first question is, when do you plan to do some hot tent adventures? Unfortunately, because it's been so warm, but well, I mean, that's the answer. It's been too warm to do hot tent adventures. I want it to be cold outside, warm inside. That way I can enjoy having that fire. It's not fun being inside of a tent when it's like, 40 degrees outside and it's like 80 degrees inside of that tent. You know what I mean? It's not fun at all. What is fun is when it's like 10 degrees outside and it's 80 degrees inside of that tent. That's when you appreciate it. By the way, cheers folks, cheers. The next question that I received, this is pretty funny. Not the question, but what popped into my head here. So this question was, what was like the oddest encounter that I've had out in the forest? Like right off the bat, this came to mind, this memory, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the outdoors. And I guess I'll go ahead and tell this story anyway because it was kind of funny, kind of weird. <laughs> okay, so check this out. A long time ago when my brother was married to his first wife, him and his wife purchased a house with her dad, with his wife's dad. After a few years, they decided to sell the house. So I went down, I was going to help them move, and so everyone's packing up and like so you had like the main portion of the house and then you had like this detached like apartment and that's where my brother's wife's brother lived in let's call the brother johnny for the sake of this story now on that day i was asked to go out to that apartment and get something so i walk outside <laughs> open up the door to the apartment and about trip on this big mass on the floor so i look down and it's like this big comforter at that point in time the comforter pulls back. There's Johnny, there's his friend underneath that comforter. And I'm just staring at him. They're staring up at me. And I'm just like, what the f are you two doing down there? And I'm like, I, you know what? I don't wanna know. I need this. I didn't even think about knocking because everybody was packing up. It was just chaos. I should have, that was a big mistake. <laughs> the point of this story is always knock before you go into like an apartment. <laughs> that's my story that was that was odd my friends i have no idea why that memory popped into my mind but it did and um i'm sorry for sure <laughs> I do have a few shout outs to give here. Eric, thank you so much for the knife from the Ukraine. It is awesome and I really appreciate it. Happy birthday, Tracy. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Craig, my friend, thank you so much for the seasonings. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. And lastly, Edward, thank you so much for your service to your community. I appreciate that and I know they do as well. Cheers to them and cheers to you all as well. tell you what folks let's talk about this tarp for a second again this is the seal tarp 3 and it did stretch and sag somewhat you can actually see it in the material check this out it stretched a number of inches there overall the stretching and sagging with this material wasn't that bad not as bad as I expected this was a good test for this tarp but now I need rain lots and lots of rain I did stay dry last night. It blocked the wind. Speaking of which, the bivy did a great job. That's the United States military Gore-Tex bivy. It's an excellent product. It is a little bit heavy, but it is high quality. All in all, slept great <laughs> until the stick hit me in the face. That was my alarm clock this morning. 
I tell you what folks, since the phone is working, there's a hazardous weather outlook that I wanted to read real quick. Okay, so there's a wind advisory in place. No. <laughs> Gusts up to 50 miles an hour. Right now, inside of the forest here, maybe 20 at times. But outside of the forest, it's probably over 50. At this elevation, definitely. The forecast says showers mainly before 2 p.m. 90% chance, quarter inch of rain. Take a look here at the radar. The blue dot is us, and as you can see, rain's on its way, but it's definitely not impressive. And in fact, it's still rather far off. To answer the question about the weirdest encounters that I've had out in the forest, I've definitely had some, with the majority of them being from like people. People are strange, you know what I mean? Especially like when they get tired. You're out on a hiking trail and you encounter someone who's been out there for a long time. They at times can be rather strange because they're like so worn out. Maybe they haven't spoken to someone in a long time. But yeah, they can be pretty weird. But um, I've definitely heard odd noises. I've never really seen anything odd. People ask about Bigfoot all the time. I've heard things, I've never seen anything. I've had things like track me in the forest. I've had things patrol my campsite. With all of those encounters, I really don't strike those up to being odd. We have a lot of black bear in the area and that's what they do. Sometimes black bear will follow you. I've had a mom with her cubs follow me before. It's interesting, with black bear, you never know exactly how they're going to react. Sometimes they will surprise you. I've come into contact with like mama bears with their cubs before, and the mom will just take off and leave the cubs right there. You just never know exactly how it's going to go. There is one encounter that I had with an animal that left me freaked out afterwards. Many years ago, I would say 15 years ago, I was basically like, my house is here, my dad's house is up on the mountain here, and I was like numerous mountains behind all of that. Basically, I'm high up, I'm on top of this mountain, and the entire mountain has been cleared. And so it's like, here I am, and there's like this valley, and it goes over to like another hill, and we're high up. And so like it drops off from that point. So I'm here, and I'm looking out over this field. That's when something like gray catches my attention. And it is the biggest canine I have ever seen. It was so large, the only thing that I can think of was that it was a wolf. First off, there were no houses around there. I mean, out in the middle of nowhere. I've had very large huskies in the past. I know how large they could be. This was much larger than a husky. I still remember this encounter clear as day in my mind. It was the biggest canine I've ever seen. I have no idea what it was, where it was going. I remember at the time thinking like, whatever I do, I do not want to alert that that I'm here. Like it was that big. Here in North Carolina, we do have red wolves, but they're down towards the coast, not up here in the mountains. So I'm not really sure what it is that I saw. All that I know is that it was so big, I was intimidated. I knew not to mess with it. What do you think it was? Comment down below. For now, I think I'm done talking. I'm going to finish up my coffee and break everything down. I will bring you all back once I have my bag packed. It's time to hike out of here. The winds are getting stronger and it's time for me to leave. All right, everyone, I'm all packed up, ready to go. I'm going to explore this forest on my way back. 
go back a completely different way. That's what I like to do out here. Every single time that I come out here, I go a different way. It is so windy, folks. <laughs> I think it's a good time for this adventure to come to an end right now before it begins raining. Thank you all very much for joining me for this trip. I will see you next week with the reviews and also the next adventure. Take care, be well, and strength and honor. Bye, folks.